this one up. We want to thank our buddies Drew and Jonathan for coming in and hanging out with us tonight, eating Chinese food. We appreciate it. Hey, uh, Rory, get a hold of uh, Tracy. She's going to come in tomorrow night to do the OCD show. I love OCD, Spaz. OCD, it's uh, it's the best. It's what I live by. I don't have it nearly as crippling as uh, people you see on TV, but I got stuff that I always have to do. And that is my absolute. I think it's crippling. I think the stuff that you, you think have I'm crippled by it. Yeah, I think the stuff that you have is crippling. Hey, I had a lot of fun talking about this stuff tonight. I love. You know what I love to bring uh, one night is like uh, somebody who really understands like quantum physics and just let them blow our mind for a couple hours. Just tell us all the crazy stuff. That that I would love. I've but always been. A, I've always been obsessed with time and how how that whole thing even works and why it even makes sense that it would go in one direction. It doesn't really. I mean, they haven't. I thought. I think it spirals as well. Look, I don't know if it spirals, but I, the way they had it um, drawn out in the Stephen Hawking book was more like it can fold over on itself. See, kind of like a burrito. Yeah, I did not get the burrito. I was completely lost in that in the Stephen Hawking book. That's like a time warp. We got bent. So does that mean we can time travel? Theoretically, if you could get going fast enough, because time stretches the faster that you're going, but according to, I think it was Einstein, you can't get anything going faster than the speed of light. Hmm. So, what did he know? They didn't have anything faster than a uh, Model T when Einstein was around. I'll tell you this, though. I've always kind of, you ever read Slaughterhouse Five? Yes. I always kind of think that maybe you'll just wake up and you'll be a little kid again one day. You know, that you'll go to sleep at night and you'll wake up and you'll be at that spot in your whole life. That would be cool, I guess. Probably not. I don't know if I would want to grow up again. No, who says? Then the next day you might wake up and you're 25. And then the next day you make, might wake up and you're 68. That you're all part of that one long line anyway. I mean, time is definitely tangible. The fact that when you're having a bad time and it takes forever for, like, let's say an hour to go by, but if you're enjoying something and an hour is up like that, there's got to be something there, and not just your mind. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, so that the cultivation of boredom in Catch-22, you practice time control through the cultivation of boredom. I don't know what that means. And, I mean, just think of it this way. Haven't you ever just shut your eyes and you woke up and open them again the next morning? Yeah. You know, I mean, that sleep time is not the same as any other time. How you doing with the anti -mount? Are you okay, honey? I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I just wish I could explain it more. I, I really don't remember the whole thing. Well, it's hard to take, the basis of here's it. The problem. I'm it's, a girl. I'm not supposed to remember I know, everything. And it's hard to take you I'm serious sure. when you have tape all over your one ear. Your earphone. <laughs> when they're taped to your head like a Princess Leia costume. Now, now you look like Nerdy Girl. Hey, here's a young man who agrees with you. Eugene said you did a good job with the antimatter talk. Eugene, you're on a fed. Uh, hey guys, there was some truth to her words, but the whole antimatter thing isn't exactly like true. All right, turn, turn your radio down. Oh, okay. Now you're going to teach us about physics. He's like one of these little smart right, kids. Guys, since the, the universe is infinite, right? Yeah. Basically, there's at least a mathematical probability that on a planet, there's a planet somewhere else in the universe that's exactly like ours, where everything is happening. On our planet. All right, wouldn't that be called Earth 2? Yeah, basically. All right, now, wouldn't there also, if we're going to believe that there's infinite possibilities there, wouldn't there also be people who look like us except for they had horns growing out of their heads? Yeah. I mean, if we went planet. on for on forever, you're exactly. saying there's nothing but Earths out there, one after Mathematical another. So anything's possible. Mathematical probability has to have, like, planets where there's going to be a person just like us. Oh, There'll I... only be like a small difference, like maybe one plant will be in a different place. All right, I can understand there being other planets like Earth, that they're set up, you know, the same distance from the sun, and they have the same things around them, you know, physically the same. But why would that mean that the people there are exactly the same as this Earth? Because the mathematical probability. Since the universe is infinite, there's got to be at least, you know... Ooh. There's a 100% chance, if the universe is infinite, that there's another planet exactly like us. You see, that, uh, you know, I'm not even buying that, but it's so far away. I mean, what if one planet, for instance, didn't have a Hitler, and there was no World War II, 
I mean, or, well, then that'd be one small difference. But then there'd be a planet where there was a Hitler. Right. And maybe the difference would be maybe and you know and it then, was a Russian guy. And then just think, there's that planet with the girl who broke your heart actually left with you. Wow. And then you two are still together. But then in that case, your kids wouldn't be born now. And, you know, it would be more than just a little off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there would be a lot of differences. Yeah. And I don't even think there would... I mean, would those people actually come up with our own names? And they think if you went to enough planets, if you went to enough planets, there'd be one where Billy was sober. Wow. Okay. So there are infinite possibilities. That's my theory. There'd be a planet where Billy's president. Oh, my God. Why did I ever... That's drunk town. Where is where is Billy and Wonder Boy tonight? Working on their uh, resumes? I have no idea. I haven't seen Wonder Boy all night. Yeah. And Billy just disappeared. How are they helping? You know? I have no idea because I, I don't think they all exist at once because I haven't seen the entire staff <laughs> together at one point. I think Mikey and Rory keep changing uh, Billy and Wonder Boy masks. Mikey is the one who seems like, hey, I want to be here tonight. <laughs> Everybody else seems like I could take it or leave it. Rory's busting Fez's balls. <laughs> I We're know. We are. Right. We're in through the looking glass here, people. We are on Earth too. And uh, guys, uh, just to talk about uh, what uh, the teacher was. I forgot, Meg, the teacher. We yeah, talked about a while ago. The nanobots. Yeah. Is what they're called. Um, the nanobots. Yeah, yeah they're called nanobots the because the size of the nanometer. Yeah. Uh, basically, if they are perfected, there would be no use for robots anymore, though. Why is that? Well, because nanobots are basically just like tiny computers that form, you know, giant colonies. Basically, you could have another, you know, little robot living inside you, talking to you. Uh, I mean, that would drive me nuts if I heard some sort of robot voice going off in my head. As, tell yourself. No, Roby. As, tell yourself. <laughs> Not going to do it. Seriously. Where's the knife? I can't take the voice anymore. All right, Eugene, you seem like a smart kid. All right. All right see you guys. Later. All right. Too bad you're not friends. <laughs> okay. Perhaps someday in the future. Eight six six two seven seven forty nine sixty nine is the toll free phone number. Drew, you ought to give him, uh, you know, a throw since he's uh, he backed up there with your antimatter. Was that what you were talking about, infinite planets with people who no, look like us? No, I mean, I was kind of talking about, but not necessarily infinite planets. But well, you told I mean, us... there was, there was, you know what, I really can't tell you because I really don't remember, but there was something, um, <laughs> some type of test that they did where they created something that was close to or was considered an antimatter. How that was created, I have no clue, and I can't tell you because I told you I just don't remember. But would the antimatter people be the exact opposite of us? No, they would be the just same Just a reflection. Of us. But like a reflection of us, kind of like a clone, but not necessarily. But yet, like more of a parallel than an opposite. I had a parallel universe. Than an opposite, yeah. But wouldn't that even like exist someplace that we can't even get to, like in a different dimension? Oh, well, of course. If we could get to it, then it wouldn't be any fun. Well, the, no, it isn't a matter of fun. <laughs> No, I would always like get a cutesy. different vibration. No, you know I, for a second, I treated you like an adult, and then you got all cute little girl. On me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Oh, maybe not. One of them. Hey. Uh -oh. I'm getting into it. <laughs> hey, by the way, with the Norton one, I noticed that you wanted to check on it. You go in the other room, away from your boyfriend. No, I went in the other room because I don't have service in here. All right, now, Mike. Uh, Hey, Mike, uh, the teacher wrote this. See if you can dig this one, Fezzi. All right, I'll do my best. All right, the universe might not be infinite at all. It could be like the surface of a sphere, no bounds but limits. Now, that one I don't get at all. Okay, so if it was like the surface like a of, ball. of a ball. Right. All right, so we're traveling around the surface. Right. So with a ball, you're just going round and round. You're never coming to the end of it. Yeah. So that makes it appear infinite. I guess because you're never. I guess you're going to start passing the same thing yeah, over I mean, and over. I mean, the Earth is an infinite, and it's really a ball. But at the I haven't size, time anyway. <laughs> but the size of the universe, and it'd be so long before we started passing the same stuff again. It's just going to appear. I right, think here's the ground. problem. What's in the middle? Ooh. Like a big black hole? I don't know. I think it would be like a jelly donut of some type. I think there's jelly in the center of the universe. Some raspberry jam filling. 
but be the absolute best. And then, so I guess then uh, you, I wonder how long it would take to get around it. And then what is that sphere contained in? Like what's holding that ball? Yeah, yeah, another good point. I mean, so, is it like Christmas tree ornaments? There's a bunch of ball universes all hanging together on something? I can't figure it out. I wanted to get to the end of this by the end of the show tonight. I want us to be able to figure it all out. But we do have to go instead, Fez, and that's, that's too bad. I really wanted to think we would know what the universe was about. Now, tomorrow night, uh, among other things, we're going to get into OCDs, and I love that, man. The obsessive compulsive disorder. I just love to see people have to deal with it. That's not cool. Do you do you have to do you have any? Yeah, there's certain things. What do you got? Certainly you has know what? To do with cleaning. No, it has nothing oh. to do with oh. cleaning. No oh. compulsive <laughs> cleanliness. Well, that's why I have him around so he can clean the house for me. Um, no, mostly like it, it was worse when I was younger because you can learn to control it, but mostly patterns. Like a lot of people talk about numbers, and I don't really have a lot of numbers, but mostly patterns. Like, like what, even what do you patterns. do? Stuff. I don't really do much anymore because I, I mean, control what, it. What do you do with the patterns? With the patterns? Just, like, there are certain ways. Like, when I went to school, if I walked certain ways to school, I would know, you know how, like, they have the concrete slabs and yeah. certain amounts away. I would know each pattern of each step that I took. And if it was off pattern, then I have to go back and start over. All right, so you're I saying don't... the pattern is you had to measure your steps. Well, they weren't really measured, but to a point, yeah. It would be, like, a like a full left step, full right, full left, half right, half right, and then it would switch. And if you hit and a certain like square... Five, Without that pattern. Without the right pattern, then you have to go back. Like, let's say you got to one certain slab of cement, and that was your full left step. If you hit that with a right, right foot, foot... Then something would be wrong. You have to go back at least one panel or whatever, whenever the pattern got messed up. It's amazing you ever got to school. <laughs> Here's what I always wonder about. What were you thinking in your head that whole time? Left foot, right foot, left you just, foot, right You get used foot, to the foot, patterns. Right foot. You don't really think like left or right. There's just it's like this one, that one, this one, that one. I don't know. So I don't know how to explain. And then like it's like with numbers too. When I was learning to do like mathematics and stuff, it mm -hmm. was set up like um, kind of like wars where they were battling each other. I still think that way. Which that is really numbers weird. go to war with each other. Yeah, it's weird. I know it sounds crazy. Hey, tell me about it. I want to hear it real quick. No, no, no. <laughs> who would fight? No, it wasn't like who would fight or whatever. It's like um, if certain numbers were together, like they were multiplied together, and they would be a higher number, and they would be stronger, like they were an army, and then, uh -huh. army, and then they can take over other numbers. I find your insanity so sexy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not as bad as I was, but like if certain things are turning different ways, like I'm not used to them uh -huh. being, or then they have to be changed, or I go crazy. Like, I don't know, it's really weird. But as long as everything is calm and the way it's supposed to be, I'm fine. That's all she asks. <laughs> it's just when it gets to have a rag, I go crazy. That's all she wants. It just has to be my way. Or the highway. Yeah, that's the important thing. Here's Paul. Paul, you're on Run Fez. Hey, Paul. Paul, you there? No, Paul. No, Paul. See ya, Paul. So you do, and you said you outgrew some of these OCDs? Some of them, yeah. Like, or other ones, I know that if I don't follow the pattern, then I'll be okay. Like, it's all right. I can go ahead and just, you know, kind of forget about it. But I don't do, like, the cleaning, the compulsive cleaning or anything like that. Oh, shush. That's, that's um, the one Jonathan wishes you had. <laughs> but, no, it's mostly, like, patterns and stuff like that. Or if I, um, let's say I blinked a certain time when I thought I wasn't going to blink, then I have to double blink on the other side to make it even and I, make it balanced. Wow. You know, you know what? Uh, <laughs> that's like Rain Man stuff. Yeah. They have to put... Great. They have to I'm put something. No. Uh, yeah, well, not so much the savant part, but the autistic part, <laughs> as well. Like if they have something in their right hand, they have to have it in their left hand. Because it's gonna, it's gonna be balanced. Mm -hmm. Or if you put something down and you hold it for a certain time period of time, then you have to do it in the other hand. Or if you have a pattern and you put your hand down, like on your right leg, you have to do it on your left. If you do it with an extra finger, then you have to do that on your right. I, I you love to keep doing it. Here's what I love about it. She tries to explain patterns like the rest of us understand. Right. And, you, and then like we even were going, honey, what do you mean by pattern? You know, like your pattern walking the patterns. Street. You know, I, patterns. I was, certain, there's like a certain no. gait that you have. There's a certain way that you move. There's a certain like type of weight that you put on each foot and on each leg. There's a certain way that you step down. There's a, see, never like, mind. <laughs> see, like I have that with the hands and uh, like water. Like, let's say you're going to reach into something and maybe pull out a soda and your hand got wet doing it. 
I would have to stick the other hand in there and get it equally wet where it feels really, really uncomfortable. All right, tomorrow night we'll try to just wet one of your hands. No. Come on, just try it and see how long you can take it. The other hand will dry and shrivel. <laughs> we'll try like it tomorrow a witch's night. Hand. Yeah. Would it be a witch's blue? That is it for the Rod and Fez show tonight. Jonathan Drew, thanks for coming in, pal. Yeah. We're running Fez. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock right after Don and Mike on 106.7 WJFK.